a switcher, a live streaming device, a monitor, and a recorder in one. We take a look at the newly introduced Atomax Cast with the Ninja 5 from Atomus. This is a Synity review, supported by B&H and CVP. Hi guys, this is Synity and my name is Nino. Shout out for this review actually goes out to Florian Mills from the Synity team. He's the one who's the multicam expert in the team and he did most of the testing. But he's more comfortable behind the camera, which is why you have to see my face here today. The Atomax cast for the Ninja 5 and Ninja 5 Plus is an interesting device. It's a bit hard to compare to the competition because it offers a lot of functions in one body that are usually spread out over various devices. First of all, it's a video switcher for up to four video sources via HDMI, but it also has live streaming capabilities directly out of the box. And of course, because it works with the Ninja 5 and 5 Plus, it's also a monitor with a 1080p screen with recording capability in ProRes and DNX codecs. Plus, apart from that, of course, if you purchase the Ninja Cast package that includes both the Atomax Cast and the Ninja 5, you're also getting a very powerful external recorder and monitor for your cameras for whenever you don't need to use the switching functionality. And since a very recent firmware upgrade, the Ninjas even record ProRes RAW from the Sony FS5 and FS7 and also Mark II, a very nice update for some legacy cameras. Now let's take a look at the hardware first. The Atomax Cast is a docking station for the Ninja 5 and 5 Plus. The way it's constructed is very smart because the Ninja just docks into the cast and is attached with a thumb screw on top. There is also a quarter inch thread at the bottom of the cast that actually allows you to attach the entire unit to a light stand, for example, when you're switching on set and don't have a table. If you do have a table, the sticky feet here at the bottom of the device ensure that it stays rock steady on flat surfaces like this one. Now let's take a look at the connections. There are four full HDMI inputs, each supporting up to 1080p or 1080i. There's also one HDMI program out, also with up to full HD resolution, and there is also an USB-C cast out with the same resolution as well. The cast has no separate on and off switch, as it only turns on when attached to a Ninja 5 or 5 Plus, which of course both of them have an on and off switch built in. And the cast has also to be set as the source on the recorder. You do that in the menu here, source, and instead of using HDMI, you just switch to Atomax Cast. Now here this is grayed out because I am recording internally as we speak. Now the unit does have a built-in fan that does seem to be always on. That's just something to keep in mind for you. I think it is quiet enough that this shouldn't be an issue even during recording, but just you know, really think about this when you are recording in a really, really quiet room. Before I talk about the interface of the cast, here's a very quick commercial break. Talking about filmmaking gear is nice, but nice gear alone is never going to make you a better filmmaker. What is going to make you a better filmmaker is subscribing to MZ Pro, the world's most professional online filmmaking education subscription. MZ consists of hundreds and hundreds of hours of online courses from some of the most prestigious filmmakers in the world from screenwriting to lighting to post-production and much, much more. We're constantly producing new courses and we're also adding freebies and discounts to the subscription all the time. So check it out on mz.com, link in the description below. Next up in this Adam X cast review is of course the interface of the device. As you can see, there are four prominent and large buttons on the cast for switching, plus another four F buttons. On the bottom of the screen of the Ninja, you also have an explanation of what the F1 through F4 buttons on the cast actually do. And you can also use those as software buttons. If F1 is active, the hardware buttons 1 to 4 let you select which input is the picture in picture. So we can try this here. You see I'm switching between the four cameras here. And of course you can also change where it would show up in presets, but now we have it in the top left corner. And if F4 is active, the 1 to 4 buttons let you switch between the camera inputs. So that's just normal switching between the camera angles. And then of course we also have F2 and F3. F2 switches between the audio sources and F3 between the overlays that are predefined. So you can see we have some overlays prepared here. So those will just be superimposed over the image. And actually let me switch to... Let me switch to my image and then we go back to the overlays and you have a, 
very large lower third on me. So, <laughs> but this is, you know, predefined stuff, very easy. Now, as you're probably able to tell, for me, this is the biggest challenge when working with the cast. It takes some getting used to the multiple functions of the big buttons, depending on which F button is active. And of course, errors can happen. On competing products like a Blackmagic 8 and Mini, you have dedicated buttons for everything. But on the other hand, you're missing many other functions. For example, the built-in monitor, the recording capability, despite a higher cost for the device. I mean, this is cheaper than an 8 and Mini, but it actually has a lot more functions. Arguably, Atomos comes more from the camera operator side of things, while Blackmagic has a broadcast hat on, but still, functionality overlaps. Now, what's really nice on the cast with this double functionality on the buttons is that there is a preview program mode instead of just using a direct cut. This is, of course, something that is also available on the ATEM switches. When you use this, the first tap on the button switches it to green, which means that it is a preview of your intended switch, but only after a second tap on the button, it will turn red and it will be applied and live. Now, this will definitely help you to prevent errors because in especially live streaming scenarios, there's really no room for error. Now, having this built-in screen with a Ninja is of course very, very nice. However, you can only see the full screen program preview or the multi-view interface. But you can connect two HDMI monitors using the program out connector on the Atom X cast and the HDMI output on the Ninja 5 itself. Now, this lets you, for example, output the program or preview on an external monitor and display the multi-view on the Ninja 5. Or you can put the preview on one monitor, the program on a second monitor, and still have the multi-view on the Ninja 5. When you are viewing the inputs on the Ninja through the preview or program view in the switcher mode, you also have all the Atom OS standard features to expose, focus, and check your camera footage. So you just make it full screen, and then down here you have all the standard modes. So you can do false color, you can do whatever, you can do peaking, you can even you know, show histograms, everything you want that you're just used to from your normal operation uh, of the Ninja 5 as a recorder, of course. What's nice is that the USB-C port on the device is always available for webcam use and it isn't blocked when you want to record or stream simultaneously. Because of course, recording you do internally on an SSD in the Ninja 5. On the Blackmagic ATA Mini, on the other hand, you have to choose if you want to record to an SSD from that one USB-C port or output the webcam feed to a computer. You cannot do both. Another plus for the Atom X cast. Now, what about audio? Well, there is an integrated headphone out with the Ninja 5. For audio input, you can use the audio from the cameras through the HDMI inputs, or you use the mic line input on the side of the Ninja for external audio. The audio menu gives you options to designate which audio source to use. Either lock it to one HDMI input or the mic and line port, or simply have the audio follow the currently active HDMI camera input. If you do that, the audio will simply cut with the camera image. Now for picture-in-picture -picture functionality, you have options to change the size, position, opacity and source of the window in a designated menu on the Ninja 5. Atomos did not try to reinvent the wheel here and we are very happy about that. This functionality is basic but enough for what most of us will expect from picture-in-picture. -picture. Now when it comes to overlaying graphics, the cast allows you to simply use 1080p PNG graphics with Alpha Channel to be overlaid on top of your video feed. You can save the graphics from your computer to the SSD that goes into the Ninja and switch out the 8 internal slots of the Ninja on the fly. After programming all the slots, you can simply short press the overlay buttons 1 to 4, like I'm doing here right now, and long press to activate it on the program out. Bam. You see here, long press, activates it. So just first press is green, you like it in the preview, you press it longer and it switches on the graphic. By the way, this program out is also your live stream feed. You don't need a computer or upstream or downstream keying in order to get this to work, like you have to on the ATEM switches, which is really great. Last time I checked, the ATEMs also didn't understand transparencies in BMGs, so that is really a huge plus of the Atomos device. On the ATEMs, I always had to use green backgrounds that needed to be keyed away. There's one point where the Ninja cast falls a little bit short though right now, and that is the limitation to only work with still images as overlays. We hope that moving images will be added in the future as an option, of course. 
What else would we like to see in the future for the Atomus Ninja cast? Well, at the moment, there's only black and white available as a dip to color for the switcher. So there's only this dip to color and then black or white. That should be, you know, you should have more colors there. For now, the overlays are on an input to input basis, which means you have to program an overlay to an input and when switching to another input, the overlays all disappear. This is a bit annoying when you want to have a global channel logo, for example, that is permanently on top of all the inputs. Another small feature we would like to see implemented in a future update would be the ability to dim the backlight of these hardware buttons on the Atom X cast, as they are a little bright in darker environments. Speaking about hardware buttons, they are way softer and more silent when pressing compared to the buttons on an ATEM switcher, which is great. We will have to see if they hold up as well over time as the ones on the ATEMs do. All in all, getting the Ninja Cast package is a great value proposition compared to some other offerings on the market. And I think this will become the go-to switcher and streaming device for small camera teams who need this functionality from time to time, but are not full-time multicam teams. Giving the Ninja 5 and 5 Plus more functionality than just being a recorder and monitor makes the Cast an easy buy recommendation from the CineD team. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and see you soon.